Hey, it's Spoonie, and it's time for the June update on Kitten Space Agency. This game is being developed as the spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program by Dean Hall and a team over at Rocketworks, which includes members from both Kerbal Space Program 1 and 2, as well as the creator of Kerbal Space Program itself, Harvester. Several influential modders from the KSP community are also involved, like Blackrack, who briefly worked on KSP2 over at Intercept Games before the studio was closed down and the game was, for all intents and purposes, scrapped. Since then, KSP2, along with every other game under the private division label, was sold off to a private equity firm called Haveli Investments. And while there are rumors that a new team led by ex Annapurna developers is being spun up to work on games from this basket, there are no guarantees that that will include Kerbal Space Program 2. And frankly, it's much more likely that the games that will be worked on are the two yet to be released games that were nearing completion when the label was sold off. So what do we know about Kitten Space Agency so far? If you're just hearing about KSA for the first time, I've put together a quick recap that should be you up to speed as far as what we know about the game so far, and what you'll need to know to better follow along with its development. If you feel you already know all of this and just want the updates from this past few weeks, just skip ahead to the chapter called New Updates. First, this game is meant to be the spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program 2. It is being built from the ground up on a custom framework called Brutal designed specifically for this game. Brutal gives the developers full control over just about everything and allows them to quickly experiment with new features and ideas, like shadows from moons on planets, which went from conception to proof of concept implementation in just three hours. Yes, there will be mod support. In fact, this game is being developed with mod support as a cornerstone, and everything in the game is essentially a mod itself which can be altered. The game will have multiplayer, and the groundwork for this feature is being baked into the game so that it can be more easily added when the time comes. We don't know if it will launch with this feature, but we do know that they are planning for it. The game will have interstellar travel. The game will also be DRM free, meaning you will not have to have an internet connection to play the game. The game will also, at least ideally, be free to play. This is still a little bit up in the air as the developers will obviously need to make money from the game. It may be through a pay what you want system or other voluntary support. We will have to wait for further clarification down the road, but we do know that Dean Hall very much wants this game to be released for free. While we don't have a lot of information on system requirements just yet, the game seems to already be incredibly performant, with at least some of the work being tested on a 2080 Super at 1440p, often achieving an FPS in the hundreds. This is a good sign that you probably won't need a 5090 to play this game at the higher settings with a decent frame rate. This performance boost is in part thanks to a system of rendering called spherical billboards, which swaps out pre-rendered meshes as you approach an orbital body rather than rendering them in real time you will be able to seamlessly switch from ship view to orbital view or to another ship around another body without the need for loading screens, thanks to the utilization of instantiable physics and the brutal framework, which allows everything to play by its own set of rules rather than everything being tied together in a persistent scene. This also gives the modders a straightforward path to adding, editing, or completely remaking systems. And those are the key points which I hope will answer a lot of the questions those who are new to the game might have. Okay, so on to the new stuff. While the month of May saw very few updates posted to the developer Discord, so far during this first week of June, our cup runneth over with new info on the development of Kitten Space Agency. So let's jump right in. Earlier this month, I posted a video showing off some new gameplay footage, which gave us our first up-close look at Venus. Some more views of Mars, the Moon, and most interestingly, at least for me, was the first descent from orbit down to the surface of Earth. Currently, there are no colliders, so this descent just kind of slips past the surface without any real climax, but it's still really cool to see. There are over 30 minutes of this footage on the Rocketworks YouTube page, but if you are interested in seeing just the highlights, or at least what I consider to be the highlights, be sure to check out my other video posted at the bottom of the description below. Below. Next, we got an update from Dean Hall on the nav ball. Something he has been personally working on is shifting from a mesh and texture over to a procedural nav ball, in this case in a fragment shader alone. In the update, he explains why he chose to do this, beginning from a disdain for how games look today, almost like somebody smeared Vaseline on the screen, over to something that would look good and scale at any resolution. But not only that, it will also make it incredibly easy for modders to replace any widget whenever they want with whatever they want. So creating a completely custom UI will now be even easier for the modding community. And I know a lot of people have expressed interest in having a setup that would 
include IVA control panels on a separate screen or even just within their main screen, and this brings that that much closer to reality. Now, we have multi-monitor support as well as complete customization of the widgets for flight control and other data. This is seriously great news, and we were given two videos that get a close look at how well it scales. In this first video, we can see both the new nav ball, which can be easily relocated and scaled along with the old style of mesh and texture. Dean Hall mentions that this would give developers and modders alike the ability to replicate this with all sorts of widgets to potentially create an entire suite of IVA controls and gauges. And in the second update on this subject, we can see the procedural nav ball completely implemented being rescaled and functioning as intended. The biggest thing to notice here in this second video is the addition of SDF numbers to the nav ball, as well as significantly less aliasing regardless of what size it is scaled to. Really great work here, and I am also really glad that they ultimately stuck with this kind of off-white and black color scheme. Over six months ago, I mentioned how I really hoped that this was more than just a placeholder, and it is starting to look like it is definitely more than just a proof of concept now. Next, we have an update from BlackRack who has been working on adding startup and shutdown transient animations to the volumetric RCS thruster plumes. And that is a tongue twister. BlackRack and Gravhoik, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, worked together on this to create what they claim are the best RCS thruster effects ever created. Totally agree with them on that. Next, we also got this Uwa Uwa with three Iceland flags, celebrating the Icelandic entry to this year's Eurovision, which Dean Hall has expressed was his favorite from this year. And as an American, I wasn't immediately sure what this was in reference to, as at least in my personal circles, Eurovision is not all that popular. I honestly didn't even know that it was held in May, but after looking into it and watching way more of it than I care to admit, I can 100% agree with Dean Hall here, Iceland absolutely killed it this year, and while they ultimately didn't win, I kind of feel like they deserve to. Next, we got an update from JPL Repo who just completed the first interplanetary transfer in KSA. This happened live during their brutal user working group. I'm not sure if this was streamed to anyone externally as I was unable to find any footage of it and if it did happen, I totally missed it. But we do have some images of that transfer that were provided and hopefully we will get some actual footage of this transfer soon. That was followed by some demonstrations of the improvements made to terrain, lens flares, and shadows. We can see plenty of tessellations on the images here, and while Cluster is said to still be in the works, I think this already looks incredible. Frankly, this is good enough to be the final product. This video we are seeing here was taken live, real time from within the simulation. The only thing exaggerated here is the height of some of the lunar features for testing purposes. But this really shows off the progress made on spherical billboarding. It just keeps looking better and better, so if this is going to be polished even further, that's just a cherry on top for all of us. And circling back to interplanetary transfers, we got some images from Dean Hall after he announced that he had also completed his very first interplanetary mission to Mars, and he was rewarded with what I think are some of the best shots we have gotten in-game so far incredible planet shine, and just a really epic scene here. In the next update, we got a look at the early progress for the undocking windows and multi-window rendering support for Kitten Space Agency. Here you can see Dean undock the settings menu seamlessly. This then creates a new application window when the settings menu is dragged away from the main viewport. As mentioned in the post, this has tons of incredible applications from gauges to nav balls and other widgets to multiple windows for various views of various camera angles or even different craft open and different windows. This is definitely going to give us some of the most cinematic shots we have seen so far once fully implemented. The community and modders are going to no doubt figure out some seriously creative ways to take advantage of this, and I'm really looking forward to that. Next, we got an update on the latest progress with procedural gauges, which is more than just what we saw earlier with the procedural nav ball. The success on procedural nav balls is now applied to all gauges which can be scaled up or down with almost no aliasing whatsoever. These are not done with meshes or textures. They are generated entirely from runtime mod data, meaning that they are created the same way modders would create them. The shaders themselves are able to access a global shader binding that is efficient when it comes to transferring data. Individual shaders and gauges then don't need special bindings and have access to whatever they need. This can allow for gauges of immense complexity, needing only the processing costs of the price per pixel for the shaders themselves. After that, grab hook and again, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, gave us a look at some of the different camera angles currently in the game. Each one of these looks great and should feel pretty familiar for anyone who has played Kerbal Space Program in the past, but there does already seem to be a little bit more variance in how each of them can be used. So that's really nice, and I'm sure there will probably be one or two more modes added for special use cases before we get a chance to try this game ourselves. I can't wait to play around with these because they really do create a very cinematic feel, but just a heads up, for anybody who is especially photosensitive, this does show a few fast-moving images and some minor flashing lights during the warps. And for those of you that want to stay up to date daily 
weekly with the developer updates, be sure to check out the developer discord or just be sure to subscribe and we can follow along with the development of Kitten Space Agency and other games together here on this channel. One update from the last month that I didn't explicitly cover as I hoped it would be resolved quickly and was ideally nothing more than a simple misunderstanding is the apparent bullying being experienced by Dean Hall and Rocketworks by Unity over Kitten Space Agency. The post on this subject reads as follows. We received an email on the 9th of May demanding we pay for enough licenses for Unity. We asked for clarity and they replied with four bullet points, none of which were true, but a number of which raised serious questions about how they gather data, along with questions about how they use it. As an example, two of the listed breaches are the names of people who work at another New Zealand game development company and have never worked at our studio or on any of our products. This is a powerful reminder of just how important it is that KSA is not being developed using technology from companies like this. Unfortunately, if Unity does revoke our access, it will hurt the studio financially. This is because we are right or die when it comes to games. We will finish Stationeers even if we have to port it as well, or release the source and move the game to a contribution model. Please signal boost this, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. There were more details posted onto Reddit. Those details on Reddit were not only removed from the Unity subreddit, but also the game development subreddit which is unfortunate. Let's also not forget that just one year ago, Unity was making headlines for a dastardly ploy to bilk as much money from game development studios as possible, introducing a new fee structure that would kick in after a game had sold 200,000 copies or grossed 200,000 in revenue. This fee structure would include a runtime fee that would charge developers 20 cents every single time somebody installed their game, which is utterly shameful. After a massive backlash from studios and gamers alike, they did ultimately walk back this runtime fee structure. Hopefully, we will get an update on this situation soon, and I hope things get smoothed out so that Rocketworks can continue to collect revenue from their other titles while they work on Kitten Space Agency. That's it for this update, so be sure to hit that like button, it really helps my channel and lets the algorithm know that this video is worth watching, which will help more people learn about Kitten Space Agency. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.